Good morning and welcome to Super Met. Well, I'm sitting in um, a brand new Honda E. Um, I picked up the car yesterday and it's going to be used as a, uh, a run around. Um, and uh, I just wanted to give you a quick rundown about it. Now, as you can see, it is the worst possible day, um, which I think you can probably see my wipers are going. Rain all over the car. It's literally less than 24 hours old and it is soaked. It's okay, it's been polished by the dealer, so it looks pretty good. But um, but anyway, welcome to the inside of the new electric Honda um, E. Um, this is the advanced model, which um, is uh, all electric. Um, it's 33 kilowatt battery underneath, so that's mounted into the floor. Um, this wonderful dashboard. Um, so you've got side cameras built in just here and another one on the other side. And then this panel of um, three, effectively three separated screens. I mean, it is actually just one complete unit. I mean, it's a huge screen. I don't know the actual size of it. I need to get the measurement. And if I can find it, I will post it up in a link below. But um, it's, it's a phenomenal little car. I didn't know how I was going to get along with it because of course, as you know from my channel, I like um, petrol cars. Um, and, um, and I've always had predominantly Porsche um, and cars along that sort of type of vehicle. This is the smallest car I think I've, I've ever owned, except for the Mini that I had when I was uh, first started driving. It was my first car. Um, but this is a bit different. The Mini was very analog, just one gauge, fuel gauge, and um, I can't remember what else, and fuel gauge, and no rev counter, it was basic. This thing has everything. So um, it's keyless entry, um, and basically you, you get in, or you get up to the car, the key is recognised by the vehicle, um, and it starts to fire up certain items, so your side monitors turn on, the main screen in the centre stays off. And uh, then you've got a little power button down here, you press that and you get this rather uh, natty noise, the sort of, it's the Honda E noise, I suppose. It's the welcoming committee come out to, to, uh, to welcome you into your new vehicle. I like it. This is the main dashboard binnacle just in front. You can see it's got miles an hour. I'm sure I'm in park at the moment and my handbrake is on. This gauge here is a power gauge, so it shows the power going up as I'm accelerating. So that's effectively utilizing power and sort of spending energy, if you like. Um, and when it goes down, it shows it charging. That is from the regen brakes. Um, and then it puts power back into the battery. So 73% power. I've done 51 miles, it really is a new car from yesterday, it was registered yesterday, um, and 11 degrees. Um, okay, then it comes into this central screen. So this is all screen from this point here. This is like a big TV, if you like, that goes all the way across here to this point just over here, and then another camera on the other side. So it is really the entire dashboard um, that is, is monitored. So you're effectively made of three. One, two this great big one and then your third screen just over here so you've got lots of this um sort of 70s japanese style fake wood which i don't mind it at all i mean it kind of reminds me of um, the old tvs you used to see um a few buttons up here you've got your con uh, volume control audio control light dimming for the inside of a car um, and this is your home button um, i believe that takes me back to my home address i think if i press it no, I don't. Oh, no, it doesn't. It takes me back to the home screen on the screens. My shows me what I know about this car. So my range down here, instead of being in 72% um, as down just down there, this shows me range in miles, which I quite like. Tesla doesn't do that. You can have one or the other, and everybody says, oh, no, don't use the, the miles. That's just going to mislead you. So it's quite nice to have that one and that one. Um, this shows you where all the latest, uh, where all the nearest um, petrol station, sorry, uh, EV stations are, um, but in fact it doesn't because I have no data on it. This button here is an automatic parking button, so you find a parking space, you press this button here, and you can see apply the brake to uh, change drive, and then it would actually check my surroundings, and it would then go off and find me um, the parking space I wish to go into. You then select that space, and the car would then reverse into that space, hopefully so you've got enough room on each side, unlike my parking, um, and that you're not curbing the door, you're not hitting the doors or curbing the wheels. So, um, and you can also say in or in or out so I want to pull out or I want to park the car so pre pretty cool system for such a small car this is really built as a shopping car and it's built for people that um, 
have problems with parking, hence why it's so small. Um, and this is obviously why they've included it. It's also quite nice to have this um, this 3D camera. Um, you don't get this in small cars. It's normally on like you know other cars, bigger, more expensive Audis, Range Rovers, that type of thing, BMWs. Um, so I, I do like that feature. Um, so this section of the screen over here, which is dark at the moment, is effectively your passenger side. So if you were to hit FM, it then brings FM up here, and then they can actually choose the radio stations. Um, I could also swap things around. So I could say here, I want to have, um, uh, let's see, I want to swap and I want the radio to be on my side and then I want navigation on the other. So I could push navigation, which goes here. Then I can say, I want to swap that over and give that back to here. Um, and I can chop and change it around. It's, it's, it's a pretty cool feature. So lots of air vents down below. Um, nice to see air vents uh, rather than things all concealed away like in the Tesla. Um, then we have climate control here. So I've got heated seats with three different settings. That then comes up above to show you what you've just pushed, which actually I found to be a bit of a problem when the navigation's working. You hit that switch to get your heated seats and then you kind of lose a bit of navigation screen or whatever it is you're doing. Well, if I turn it off, the whole bar comes up and removes whatever was in front of me until it disappears four or five seconds later, which is a bit of a pain in the bottom, but it's one of those things. Um, you can then select, you know, rear screens. Quite nice the way they've done it. So you can see it. Front screen you can see there. Um, different modes for um, ventilation and how I want it. Um, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's quite nice sort of animations and the way they've done it. I'm quite pleased with it. Um, air conditioning I can switch off, recirculate the air inside the car. Or I can turn the whole system off, as you can see there. I'm going to turn these seats off. I'm starting to cook. Okay, so on the steering wheel, um, my favourite new button, this button, which is my seat heat, um, my, sorry, not my seat heater, which is my steering wheel heater. So that's heating up the edges of my steering wheel. In fact, it's coming on already. Very, very fast. I can feel it warming up really, really nice. Um, this area here is to do with my cruise control so i've got different limits um i've got um, i can set my cruise control i've got my lane departure warning here and active steering control um, and this one is for the distance of the vehicle in front of me so i can set that it will i want it very close or i want it quite a long way away depending on on road driving conditions this puts my speed up my speed down cancel it um, and this is to set the um uh, the, the actual system on and off, which you can see here. So you can see look at the cars come up and if I want the, um, the lane departure, two lines have come up next to me. And if I want to set, um, how far away you can see one bar has come up there. I can press it again and that is moving those bars down, which means the other car that's representing the other car will be down towards me. So if I cancel that and we're going to turn that off because I don't actually need it and we'll turn off lane departure and all those other things. Um, okay. We've also got a few other bits and pieces in here. We've got, um, EV menu here. Um, it shows me my charging times and conditioning of the car. Um, I can set charging limits. So I can say I only want 80% charge or I can say 100%, whatever I'm deciding to choose. Um, not good to let a battery be charged to 100% the whole time on an EV. Best to keep it at 80% on daily driving. Longer journeys go for 100% and it just gives you that top up you require. Um, charging schedule allows me to actually take the car home, plug it in at say four o'clock in the afternoon. Then at midnight, when my electricity is cheaper, maybe the car will then automatically start charging and, and away we go. So that's quite a nice facility to have. A lot of home chargers do have this built in, but it's sometimes good to build it into the car if you've got multiple vehicles. Okay. Personal assistant doesn't work because the data package on this car doesn't work as of yet. Honda's got to switch it on. Um, I've got my navigation, which is just over here pretty standard stuff. Uh, my telephone, which is Bluetooth telephone, has all my contacts, does my text messages um, and other items. Um, EV menu you've seen. I've got Apple CarPlay, which is wireless. Again, you would have seen that. Um, I'm trying to get Waze to work because Waze isn't working so far, but we'll see if we can get that loaded up. Traffic announcements and then a few other little bits and pieces down here. Um, okay, this car has a Wi-Fi hotspot as well, but as of yet, data isn't switched on, so that does not work. Um, Bluetooth to connect up. This is really so um, the passenger side can connect their phone to the screen and then they can have their calls, do whatever they want. 
FM radio and general settings. So if we go into general settings, um, you can see here you've got the main system um, and other items. You've got your camera, which you can change, sound on, for the audio system, uh, display settings. So let's have a look at um, this. So I've got different wallpapers I can choose. Uh, so why don't we go for, let's go for a very Japanese style. Save, so that is gonna be my, my new background. Um, I don't even know how I see that. So let's go back here and back again. Is that going to come up? No. Maybe that comes up, in fact, when I play around with it and I, I change the windows around. See, I'm learning the whole time. So that is actually, that's kind of an opaque background. Um, so that's, that's okay. Um, and also, having turned off the air conditioning, I've just seen when I push the off button, my range has just jumped to 86 miles from 71, I believe it was. Um, you guys will probably tell me. So that's quite good. So I've actually saved quite a lot of energy by not turning my heating on, um, which is good for now, but not so good in the winter. Okay, another reversing, sorry, another uh, camera over here. Then you've got your rear view camera up just up here. Um, so this can either be a standard camera, you can see me here, or this can go into the camera for the rear. One gripe I actually have with it, it's very, very uh, waterlogged at the moment. Um, and you can see there's lots of specks which are sort of moving on the screen. I don't really like that. Um, I think they need to put a cover over it or something that wipes the rain off it because the side view mirrors are perfect. There's no issue at all with those. So I'm not quite sure what happened on this one, um, but I'm going to apply a rain um, guard to it, um, something that will stop it from getting furred up. I have a G-Tech pro uh, G Technic product, which I'm going to use on it, and um, that actually takes the water off the windscreen, and I'll, I'll do the camera at the same time. Okay, so then, um, looking down uh, into the center of the car, um, you can see here, we've, this is our sort of drive select control area. So we've got park, reverse, neutral, and drive. This little button here, is my regen braking. A uh, bit of a gripe is I have to actually press this every time something, um, something, um, every time I press park and I go into drive, I have to press this to get the regen brakes to work. Drive mode, normal and sport mode, and then obviously my parking brake and a brake hold button here. Um, and then in the back of the vehicle, um, not a bad size. Um, it's what you expect from a town car. I like the seat belts in it, these sort of brown seat belts. Seats are quite quite nice in it as well there's there's nothing um they're not sort of sports racing seats or anything like that but they are um perfectly acceptable in this very sort of japanese um it's very japanese material but um door card's quite nice quality feels good um and there'll be more about this vehicle shortly thank you for watching um please subscribe and like and um hit that bell button so you get notifications and I will be uh, coming back with more videos when it isn't raining. We'll do um, we'll do a, a bit of driving in the car, show you how it acts, how it drives, um, get some cameras up up in the air, get the drone up, and get some on the bodywork of the car. And we'll show you what it's like living with this on a daily basis. I'm also going to be doing a comparison against my um, my Tesla um, and compare these two cars. They are like chalk and cheese, but they are both EVs. For everybody that doesn't know, EV is electric vehicle. Um, there's also somebody else from the um, uh, from one of the forums who wants to do a conversation online with me. We're going to do a Zoom call and we're going to compare our two cars. We're going to see what we've noticed, what works, what breaks, um, what doesn't operate properly, maybe needs attention from Honda, and we're going to have a good chat about it. And then you guys can get involved at the same time. Um, so thanks for watching. Have a great day. Stay out of all this wet weather. Don't get too soaking wet and, and freezing cold. And um, drive carefully and see you all soon. Thanks for watching.